I didn't know what to say. I had been so loaded in Panama, I could scarcely remember my own name. I know things had got real heavy. Panama had been my second job with Passos. Hey, Max. Max. Come on. The first had been easy. Money for banging waitresses at some fancy wedding in the Caribbean. This seemed like another easy gig. It was the middle of the day, and like any self-respecting idiot, I was half cut. No, son, nothing like doing some good blows, some good friends on a boat. Daphne! Ah, come here, I love oh, this one. Marcello, you're going to be the death of me? Alfredo, <laughs> more chance. Sure beats New Jersey, huh, Max? Some ways. Hey, come on, it's awesome. Yeah. Everybody's drunk and tanned and listening to house music. Most of them have plastic surgery and they're all doing blow. I guess it is kind of like Jersey, huh? <laughs> That's very funny, Max. Hey, hey soldier. Oh. oh. I gotta quit drinking so much. I'll give myself serious liver damage. Hey, big deal. You can always get a new one. Relax. I hope you're not drinking on the job, gentlemen. <laughs> Kidding, I hope you are! <laughs> Just stay off the AO, hmm? I don't have enough to share. I'm kidding again! <laughs> oh, Mikey. Even though we just met, I feel like we are good friends, you know? Mm. I feel like safe with you guys. Know that, like real safe. That's great. Yeah, and I love New York. Uh, the East Hamptons, do you know it? Uh, not really. I, I spent my honeymoon in Montauk. Oh, where's that? It's just down the road. Whatever. Last time I was there, I got so wasted, I nearly shit myself. <laughs> I didn't know you were married. Yeah, well, my wife passed away. Good. No, not good. Bad. Real bad. But good, because now I can get you laid a lot. <laughs> it is great to be single, hey? Uh, I love a woman. She's with another, and she doesn't want to know it. Fuck her. I mean, could you believe that?
The dead guys looked like soldiers in one of those Central American guerrilla armies. Pirates with a manifesto. Psychos with a dream. That sort of bullshit. They didn't help with my sea legs, but they sure as shit felt good. The room belonged to Passos, my partner in crime. Or maybe someone else's. Maybe I could send out an SOS. It certainly wasn't the first time I'd woken up with a hangover, long after a party had turned sour. need to get out of the boat's hull and onto the upper deck as soon as possible was countered by the probability of running into another hijacker. I had to move carefully. the second I got out of there. I needed one more gulp of fresh air before I died. It was like the need for a wake-up whiskey after a two-day bender. How to shut off the fuel feed. I shut down one engine, but it didn't make much difference. Now the boat could get back to smelling like suntan oil, stale margaritas, and greed. So this was the famous Panama Canal. We could have gone to the moon while I was passed out and I wouldn't have noticed. seen than the one I'd stumbled away from. Where was everyone? I still didn't know what the hell happened. I didn't like to think what was behind the door. The pirates wouldn't get everything.
The guys up ahead weren't dealing with passengers like the rest of them. Maybe I should have realized then that this was no ordinary kidnap job. Something on the boat had attracted the sharks. Daphne Bernstein, a recent divorcee making the most of her considerable settlement, and Marcella was making the most of her. I didn't... I don't want to think about it. Miguel! Vení por acá! something firing these guys other than good old-fashioned socialist zeal. What were they looking for? It didn't make sense. Why would they leave the jewels and rip open the walls? It didn't occur to me just what the other cargo on board could be. on a ghost ship in a ghost canal. The whole thing creeped me the hell out. The boat was well appointed.
and the band played on. Daphne's ship was always stocked. Maybe there was something on the bridge. I checked every other inch of the boat. I spotted Passos and Marcelo. If I'd known back then that they'd been up to no good while I was fighting my way through a band of violent paramilitaries and a worse hangover, I might not have wanted to get over to them so bad. Hey, Passos! At the time, I hadn't thought too much about this. I hadn't thought too much about anything. Now I remember it. It didn't seem quite so kosher. What about, what's her name? Daphne. I do whatever you think is best. I think it's best we try to go find her. Yeah, okay, let's go. Nah. See, I didn't think Passos was a bad guy. He didn't need to try to save this woman or the crew. Through here. You knew your way around here. They were using that building to get across the canal. There was some equipment in the truck next to me. It'd be a shame to see it go to waste. Get down! 
I don't know what I expected to find. On a boat full of drunks and bullshit artists, I'd been the cabaret act. Shooting whatever came in front of me was easier than coming to terms with that reality. like the way up, but it was locked. I had to find a switch. I needed something to help me adjust to being back on land.
was nice to see a friendly face in Panama. Americans had a long and checkered history of involvement in Panama. This was my sorry chapter, for what it's worth. Jesus Christ. This is brutal. I didn't think things would be like this. I should have jumped in that goddamn canal myself and swum my way back to New York. What do you think you were really doing in Panama? I was drinking. People died. Innocent people. Who do you think robbed you? I don't know. I was told it was people who disliked Daphne Bernstein. Something about an unpleasant divorce. Her ex-husband worked on Wall Street. Do you think he has easy access to Panamanian death squads? Guess I didn't really think about it. You were smuggling something, weren't you? No, no, no. I mean, I didn't realize it at the time. I, I didn't think too much about it, but yes, Marcelo did drive off with something. I don't know what, I didn't see him until we got to Brazil a week or so later. I think it was money. I think Marcelo and Victor have a friendly banker there in Panama. Your little cruise was to deliver the cash to him because there it's easier to loan with. But I thought the Broncos were rich. Rodrigo's rich. The other two, they live well, but they don't have real money. Victor's campaigns were always financed by his brother. That is the way among certain rich families there. The eldest brother is the king. You know, he gets everything. The other two, not so much. And now Rodrigo's dead. Exactly. In Marcelo, too. It's an awful tragedy for Victor, huh? A man running on a law and order ticket, you know, whose brothers have both been killed in such terrible circumstances. A true patriot. What about Marcelo? Marcelo. Marcelo was an idiot. Were this true, I certainly don't believe he could possibly have known about it. But I do believe some other scheme, you know, some other bullshit. Whatever that cash was, Victor could have talked him into something. I don't know yet. And Passos? Well, Passos is a bum ex-cop. He failed in America, failed in Sao Paulo. He was surrounded by more money and more poverty than his tiny little head can handle. You think guys like that can't be bought? No, but if... But nothing. Probably not a bad guy. He's just a man caught in the crossfire of a very rich family. What about me? You. You're the fall guy. The American. Running around, acting like the action hero. Killing lots of people. 
You're a stroke of genius. That ain't how it is. You were an angry ex-cop. You were sitting in a bar with a history of violence and a history of a bad temper. You were perfect. Me and Passos went to the academy together. Did you? I don't fucking know. <clears throat> okay, let's take a drive, Max. You wanna do some good, hmm? You wanna get yourself killed in a good cause? Then I need you to check something out for me. Like what? That incident at the favela today. Now, some of my officers say a bus drove off some captives. They did, I saw it. But no captives were ever booked. They probably handed them off to the paramilitary death squads, the, uh... Casa Preto? Right. Who did? I don't know, the cops. The other cops, the cops who shoot on sight. The Ufe. Right. Max, you see that building there? The Imperial Palace Hotel? Yeah, that's what it says. People go in there, in large groups, under armed guard. But it isn't a police station, and no one comes out of there. Why don't you just go in and bust the joint, get a warrant? I'm only a cop, Max. <laughs> so you keep saying. <clears throat> Time to find out what was going on here. I didn't fancy booking myself in the presidential suite, so went looking for the basement. I wasn't too excited about the acoustics in this place. A couple of gunshots would sound like I'd walked in here with a goddamn marching band. It wasn't pretty, but I guess none of what was about to happen was gonna be. It was the question I kept on asking myself. How could I have been so blind? I was convinced the Broncos had gotten the wrong man for the job, but maybe De Silva was right. I was the stooge. The bad joke everybody got but me. You can't unsee something, but you can dull the effect. The Imperial Palace Hotel was a five-star bona fide shithole. I needed to find out why guests were checking in by the bus load and checking out by the bag load. Maybe the service would be better upstairs.
Silva and I had the same fan club. I knew enough and he knew too much. We'd both become targets. If I'd thought about this too much, I'd never get through it. I knew this thing was bigger than me, bigger than the Broncos, but I only had a glimpse of the whole picture. Like looking in the mirror and for an instant seeing what everyone else sees, a bad caricature of a better man. Ufe, that deal at the favela was getting dirtier by the minute. Those bastards were clearly in bed with the crush of Prado. Now we just had to find out why. Starting with a bit of bedtime reading for Mr. Da Silva. When you've lived the kind of life I've lived, reality comes at you through a different lens. But nothing could have prepared me for what was on the other side of that door. I had to get those poor bastards out of there. Get them out of here. Go. Go. Wait. I said get. Serrano. Serrano. He looked pathetic. A man defeated. I walked away and left him to his own personal nightmare. Whatever hell this was De Silva had sent me into, I knew I had to put an end to it. I had no choice but to push on. I didn't understand everything, and I never would, but I understood enough. Sometimes a complicated problem is best tackled with a simple solution.
This was hell on earth. De Silva was no fool. I'd have driven on off into the sunset too if I were him. But I was in too far now. Where those bastards were going, they wouldn't need medication. It looked like Victor had won the sympathy vote found his universal connection to the people. Triumph out of tragedy. Part of me couldn't help thinking that had been his plan all along. Time to see what fresh hell awaited me upstairs. was the soundtrack to my life. And for a few seconds came harmony. Finally. This is for you. Listen, I know people. They will kill you. I can help you. Trust me. Please, please. What have you been doing? I have a lot of money. Look, look. Lots of money. I do important research. Please. Caralho! Caralho! Espera, espera. Eu posso explicar tudo. Tudinho! Não, não. Por favor. Pelo amor de Deus. Por favor, não me mata. Não, não. Pelo amor de Deus! E aí, doutor? <risos> For all Serrano owed me, he'd paid enough. For now, 
I had bigger debts to call in. Even I could guess what Demolisal meant. That building was condemned in more ways than one. something I wasn't seeing. They had a fucking arsenal in here. It was time to bring this little hellhole to the ground, so I decided to put some of their C4 to good use. seen some dark shit in my time, but this was something else. These vermin had gone into a place where life was cheap and found a way to get rich off it. I just wanted to finish this and get far away from here. But then, true to form, more of the rats came out of their holes. At least my visitors have been kind enough to leave the gate open. When you find yourself in hell, dance with the devil. It was time to see what VIP treatment awaited me on the penthouse floor.
Time I'd bought had been going real cheap. If I was gonna plant the rest of those explosives, I had to do it now. That was the last of the explosives. I just hoped it was enough to bring down the building. And all the evil in it. Vai, vai, rápido, rápido, vai! Who wants to take a shot? You see what this is? Come on, anybody? Wanna be a hero? I got nothing to lose, let's do it! Que porra que tá acontecendo aqui? Senor Nevis. What the fuck is your problem, man? <laughs> my problem? My problem? Wanna know what my problem is? You're turning humans into glue! That's what my fucking problem is! I don't know what you're talking about, American. All I know is what I hear about you. You bodyguard for the Brancos. They are all dead. You help the poor. Today, many of them dead. You were a proper American hero. At least I fucking tried. Well done with your effort. The whole city is grateful. The great American savior of the poor. That's right. You think you made any difference? You think stopping this legitimate business venture is helping anyone? Legitimate? You're stealing people's organs. We pay for everything. We have the record. Oh, so people can sell their livers, their hearts, their eyeballs? You're insane, you sick fuck. We kept people safe in the city. Decent people. Safe. I know a lot of powerful people. Well, your powerful people aren't going to help you out of this one, buddy.
was dangerous, friend. Yeah, I kind of like it. It's growing on me. <laughs> nice to see your happy tourist smiling. <laughs> doing here I came back I can see that but why to save you oh yeah real hero listen it's now C come with me Max to Brazil a chance to play the fall guy in a plot that my boss and brothers hatching to profit from the selling of human organs yeah it'll be perfect for you what are you talking about I don't know nothing about human organs man Victor and Marcelo are trying to teach Rodrigo a lesson get him to loosen the purse strings and the family money they pressured me into doing it. You wanna die? I came back for you. I did my best. I'm having a kid, Max. I gotta go. Fuck you. Sure. Later. Now, let's go. Hope this thing works. Everything. No, you don't. I'm sorry I couldn't save your sister. I was there. It wasn't your fault. I was paid to protect her, and I didn't. She married into a sick family. Maybe. I... I just wanted to say thank you for giving us a chance to live. I mean, as a family. I hope it all works out for you, for all of you. Thank you. Don't be too long. Well, buddy, that's it. Where are you guys gonna go? Uh, I don't know, maybe back to New York, uh, maybe down to Argentina. Giovanna has family in Salvador. Maybe we'll just stay there. Yeah, I got business to take care of. Look, I I'm sorry I, I dragged you into this. I, I know, uh, I, I know it was very wrong. It's all right, it's done. But hey, I'm having myself a fun old time. Maybe this is how things had to be. Figure I. Might as well die in the sunshine as die in the snow. Look, I'm sorry I'm leaving. I, I got a kid coming, you know? you know how it is. I know how that is. You know, I... I almost didn't say goodbye to you. I said to myself, maybe this guy will put a bullet in me. <laughs> maybe I will. But not right now. Thank you. Try to look after yourself, Max, huh? Life is worth living. If you say so, pal. I thought I was going to have to witness another murder. <laughs> nah. Not him. You ready? I guess. Okay. I've, uh, looked through this information you gather. It's not very nice. What is it? It's the Ufe. The famous Mr. Becker. Friend of Victor Bronco. <laughs> yes. And a contributor to his campaigns. A government employee, of course. And? A weapons dealer. A murderer. This was known. A dealer in human organs. This wasn't known. A proper gentleman. Mm, sure. So you're gonna bring him down? <laughs> yes, because I want to lose my wife and my children and then get killed myself. All that after watching him walk free. Tell me what has to be done. Well, officially, there's uh, nothing I can do. And unofficially? Well, we can always try something a little more creative. Creative? De Silva had promised me a 10 o'clock showcase. I had to make sure I was on stage and ready for my close-up. Diga a Becker. Que vim para ele. Hey, 
moço. Mano, o que é esse cara aí? Manda tua conta, rapaz. Vai, vai. Conta o Deus. Meu conta é um terço mais da culpa. Ela não desgruda dela, mano. Ei, o que é essa cara aí? Convidado nosso. Quebra esse otário aí. Deixa comigo, me dá uma lição nele. <risos> então, o pai dela não desgruda. Patrão, filha da puta! Tá atrás de inocentes! Vai que fudeu aqui dentro! Mas vem com essa receita de tomate aqui! Eu não sei o que você vai me acontecer, caralho! Tá pensando o quê? Hã? Onde é que você vem? Fica aí, cara! Eu! Se fudeu, filha da puta! Otário! Sai daqui, velho! Deixa eu sair daqui, velho! Ô, ô, ô! Segura a porta aí! Eu vi uma outra versão. Valeu, mas eu vi aquela parada lá, hein? Hey, what are you doing here? Huh? I ask you a question. Answer him. Answer him. What, what? are you doing? What? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? I, I don't understand. I can't hear you. What are you what doing, are you here? doing you here? Me in the ear. Hey, answer me. What are you doing here? I knew nothing resembling good times lay beyond that gate, but I was going to have to face the music sooner or later. I guess our little stunt. It sounded like all hell was breaking loose. Whatever nonsense Da Silva had pulled, it seemed to be working. As few prisoners were trapped in here, and more presently, Zindai was too. Security switch had to be in that booth. Puta da puta! 
That kid had had the right idea. There was no point bouncing bullets off that thing. I decided I'd try to pick up where he left off. Shame to let that RPG go to waste. Wasn't this nice? The perfect end to a perfect trip. If someone had told me six months ago this was where my life was headed, I'd have ordered a double of whatever they were drinking, drunk it, then blown my head off. Another police station, another futile crusade for amends. Time moves forward, and nothing changes. Every bastard in the joint must have known I was on the loose by now. I couldn't afford to waste any more time.
They'd come from the control room. It looked like the security cameras were still running. It looked like the prisoners were giving them a run for their money. That's what happens when you hand some roided up halfwit a commando uniform with special on the front and let him ride around his hometown in a tank playing soldiers. Sooner or later, someone's gonna decide he's not so special. There were a bunch more in the elevator, tooled up like they were about to roll into Fallujah. And of course, they were headed my way. rising. That meant I was getting closer to the source. I had to keep moving. If there was one thing I learned since being in Sao Paulo, it was that me and the local elevators were not a good mix. Whatever depressing fate lay on the other side of those doors, there was no point in putting it off any longer. killed more cops than cholesterol and still no sign of Becker. It wasn't the first time it dawned on me I should probably have gone over the plan in more detail, but it was too late for that now. I figured I'd bag those up for evidence. If 
if I didn't hurry, Becker would be long gone. I still didn't know how I'd gone from drinking myself numb in New Jersey to looting corpses in Brazil. But this was where I was, 5,000 miles from a home I couldn't go back to on another suicide mission to clean up a mess that wasn't even mine. I'd spent my career dozing off in the briefing room. Now wasn't the time. starting to feel as if I'd never leave that place. Like one of those nightmares where you keep running and running only to discover you're chasing yourself. Tear gas. This wasn't good. I needed to find a way out of that stairwell and fast. My eyes and throat burned, but at least I could breathe. I was trying to work out what direction I was headed in when I discovered some more Brazilian architecture not designed for the American physique. There it was the tape from the Bronco security system. Jesus, it was that guy. I had seen him in the favela, Bachmeyer, Becker's right-hand man. His time would come, him and Becker. I'd seen enough. It was time to bring this nightmare to an end. that tape out of my head. Why had Ufe killed Rodrigo? I wasn't gonna find any answers in the forensics lab. I had to push on.
Hey, pal. Nice to see you. Vai pra casa, gringo de merda. I don't think we've been properly introduced. I know who you are. Then you should have killed me in the office when you had the chance. There's still time, meu camarada. Still, nothing to show for it. It felt like I was detaching, that maybe this was revenge for something else, something buried deep in the past. Rodrigo, Giovanna, Passos, everyone who'd meant anything was gone. Like so many times before, I'd found myself alone, locked on a course of destruction. It was at my worst when I was at my best.
Luckily, I wasn't the only cop with a pill problem. Any bullets I had left were being saved for someone special. Becker and Bachmeyer had taken their pound of flesh and sold it on the black market. Now I was coming for mine. Beleza, rapaziada, bom trabalho. Só tô esperando a confirmação do outro grupo, mas o gringo já deve estar tá morto agora. Senhor, ele não parece estar tá morto! Filha puta, pelo amor de Deus!
Americans love to interfere in things you do not understand. Oh, I understand plenty, asshole. How stupid can one man be? Worth a shot. Thank you for all the fine work. You're even great. This was the pass key to Becker's office. I was close to the end of all this, and I could feel it. Becker! <laughs> Something funny about dying? I felt like the avenging angel. I looked like a fat, bald dude with a bad temper. You disgusting piece of shit! I know everything! Not everything, my friend. Let go of him, Max. Huh? Hmm? <laughs> There's a good fellow. Well, well, well. Victor, I was wondering when you'd reappear out of whatever slimy hole you live in. <laughs> I'd like to just say, Max, I just want to say thank you for all your hard work, for my family, and for cleaning up that horrible mess with the Crasha Preto for us. You know I'm tough on crime. I give you a bonus, but I think you just fritter it away. Becker, take his gun. Thomas, you feel the poop. They had barred the door. My only hope was to chase them down. I knew they'd be leaving town, and my guess is they would try to fly out of here. Rich people love to fly away. God damn it! <laughs> 